And it's now 1035, so we can go ahead and get started. Thank you for joining us for Premier for the Mathematics session. We have Dr. John Davis, who's here to talk to you about the Mathematics Department and have some time to answer questions. So I'll go ahead and let Dr. Davis get started. Okay, well, welcome to Premier 2021. Uh, like Amanda said, my name is Dr. John Davis. I'm a professor of mathematics and also the undergraduate program director for mathematics. And so what I thought I would do is quickly give you a brief overview of our program and then make sure that I reserve some time at the end for you to ask questions that you may be interested in about uh, uh, your particular interest. So without further ado, um, this tells you our mission here. And our mission is to provide quality mathematics instruction at all levels and to make significant contributions to the discovery and the dissemination of mathematical knowledge and to develop within a Christian environment, ethical scholars, skilled professionals, and educated leaders who are sensitive to the needs of society. Okay, so to tell you a little bit about our department, we're what you would call in the grand scheme of things, sort of a medium-sized department. We have 40 faculty. We offer the two different bachelor, we have, well, a BA and a BS with two options, as well as an MS and a PhD program. We represent all the major research groups in mathematics. Uh, so basically, if there's any field of mathematics that you're interested in, we have representation in those groups. Uh, for the size of our university, we have actually a, uh, a good number of math majors. We have about 160 math majors and secondary majors, which are like double majors, and approximately 300 minors. So that's a lot of, of math majors and minors. For the BA in pure mathematics or theoretical mathematics, this gives you an overview. Um, you can see the catalog for detailed descriptions of what your options are within these categories, but this gives you a feel for the, uh, for the size of the requirements in terms of math and lab sciences and social sciences that people often ask about. How many hours of lab do I have to have to be a math major? Uh, to give you a feel for our mathematics courses, um, and these are just general, general guidelines, just to give you a feel for things. Again, you can see the catalog or you feel free to ask me uh, for detailed descriptions. Um, normally in your freshman and sophomore year, you'll take calculus one, two, and three linear algebra, and then we have a, a course called Foundations of Mathematics. It's Math 3000, but it is, um, the only prerequisite is Calculus 1. And the idea is very quickly after Calculus 1, if you're interested in majoring in mathematics, we wanna get you into some non-calculus mathematics for you to get a feel of what your upper level math courses would be like. So this is kind of giving you a chance to uh, dive in sooner and not have to wait till you finished a year, year and a half of courses. In your junior year, majors take intro to analysis, which is uh, probably the first hefty theoretical course that they take, as well as foundations of combinatorics and algebra. Again, you can kind of see we're trying to well round you in the areas of analysis, but also in algebra. Um, they usually take ordinary and or partial differential equations, which is my specialty and uh, intro to mathematical modeling to give you an applied feel. And then as you get move into your senior year, there's a lot of choices here. These are just typical courses. It's not saying that everyone takes all of these. We have an advanced calculus or real analysis sequence, an abstract algebra sequence. We have a numerical analysis sequence. We also have courses in complex variables, cryptology, and some other courses in differential equations and applied mathematics. For the BS in pure mathematics, uh, this is a very common um, one of our mode. This and the and the BS in applied math are our two most common degree options. You can see that there's a little bit more hours required in the math, um, the and a little bit more required in the lab sciences. And this would be for someone that wants to go into graduate school. Okay. The BS in applied mathematics is a very robust degree option. Again, it doesn't you don't study more or less math whether you do the BS in pure or applied, but you, uh, you have different concentrations, you concentrate in different sequences. One thing I really like about our BS in applied mathematics is that you choose a subspecialty, either in statistics, mathematical modeling, or numerical analysis, and you take nine hours within that specialty to give you some depth as well as breadth. Uh, if you're say, hey, I like math, but I'm not sure that I want to major in math. I think I might want to minor in math. This is a very, very popular thing. Virtually everyone in engineering, they either get a math minor for free or they take one more math class besides the requirements to get a minor. Uh, it's very popular for people in pre-professional majors like medicine and law because it really 
hones their analytical thinking and sets them apart from the crowd when they're competing for spots in law school and medical school. Uh, to get a minor in math, it just requires seven core math classes, Cal 1, 2, 3, linear algebra, and then you get to choose any three upper level math courses, which would be 3,000 and above. So uh, engineers uh, usually accomplish all of these or almost all of these just from their degree requirements. If you think if you're thinking, hey, I want to be, you know, I want to major in something completely different like chemistry or I want to major in engineering or I major in computer science or I want to do biostatistics or something like that. Uh, you can get a secondary major, which some schools call a, a, a double major. And this gives you the outline of courses of how to accomplish that. And if you're in one of these hard science technical majors, a lot of these math courses you have to take anyway. So then what you do is you just use some of your electives and um, use them on these courses and you walk away with a secondary major in math, which is also very, very marketable. A lot of people ask me, what do mathematicians do? They think that they only teach school, but actually, um, of course, a lot of people that go in uh, and, and teach in secondary schools or in college or something like that, but there's lots of jobs uh, you can see that academia makes up about 29% of all people that are math majors uh, in terms of where they're employed. So there's lots of other places where people get employed. Um, if you think of it as a math degree is really a problem solving or a thinking degree, then a lot of companies will hire you basically as a problem solver. And then they can figure whether it's in finance or whether it's, can, it's something to do in engineering or it's something to do in computer science, they figure we can teach you the technical skills that we need here. Or you can learn those on the job. But what we really want is your ability to think carefully, communicate carefully, and um, work well with others in a problem-solving sense. Okay. So here, I'll just throw this up here. There's not going to be enough time for you really to read it, but you can just kind of spot check several things. These are where recent Baylor graduates in mathematics uh, were employed over the last few years. So if you, if you stare at that, there's people that are going on to graduate school, but there's plenty of people doing other things. Uh, both locally in Waco or Central Texas, but also across Texas and across the country. We do have uh, mathematics specific scholarships, so um, be sure to take a look at that. Uh, if you just look on our departmental website, www.baylor.edu slash math, you will see information on these, but there are mathematics specific scholarships available. So one thing that I think sets Baylor Mathematics apart is we're not a super small department, um, which can come with the caveat that if you're going to a super small department, there's not a lot of math majors, so they can't offer a, big, uh, a wide variety of courses. On the other side, if you're in a huge department with lots, lots and lots of majors, then it can kind of be easy to be lost in the crowd. We're in that medium size, I think in that sweet spot, almost all of our classes are less than 30 a lot of times in our senior level classes right now, for example, I'm teaching math 43, 26, uh, a senior level class, and I have 23 students in my class. And that's a big senior level class. I've caught, taught many senior level classes that have 10, 11, 12 in them. So professors do teach across the curriculum, both lower and upper level courses. I teach everything from calculus one for freshmen to junior level differential equations, to senior level advanced analysis, to PhD level courses. And so you would be have the chance to be taught by someone um, that is knowledgeable across the, the, the math spectrum, but also um, someone that does active research in their areas and teaches, teaches at the graduate level. So I think that's a, that's a unique thing. Um, a lot of people are interested in advanced placement. What Baylor does is if you get a four on the AB exam, then you get credit for calculus one, a four or five. If you get a three, four, or five, you get credit on the BC exam, you get credit for calculus one and two. If you're interested in math education, here's a little blurb on that um, to be like a secondary mathematics teacher. Um, there's also more information on our website on that. Okay. And so if you have any questions, I realize that I just wanted to give you a quick overview. I'm happy to give you a chance right now to ask questions, but I want you to realize again, point you to our website. There's tons of information on there. But I uh, also want to let you know that you can reach out to me at any time if you have questions. Uh, certainly email me, John underscore M. Don't forget the M. There's another John Davis at Baylor. And if you forget the M, it, your email will go to him. So John underscore M underscore Davis at Baylor.edu. And I can answer your questions by email, but I'm also happy to answer them right now. So thank you for your attention.
So if you were wondering anything about course options or transfer things or employment opportunities, um, maybe while I'm giving you a chance to think, to put questions in the chat, feel free to ask by voice or with the chat. Um, one thing that uh, I didn't talk about because we got started just a little bit later is the opportunities for undergraduate research. Um, there are, we probably have at least a dozen, maybe one to two dozen faculty members engaged in undergraduate research at any time. So if you're a math major that think, if you want to major in math and you think, hey, I want to go to graduate school, I want to see what undergraduate research is like, um, you have the opportunity to work one-on-one -on -one with someone who's an active researcher publishing in their field. And we have people doing that. It can happen as a freshman, but it certainly happens as a sophomore. And as you get to the junior and senior year, it happens even more. So we have a question in the chat. If I were to have interest in actuarial science for a career, what path would be best for me? Actuarial science would be housed in statistics rather than math, which is a separate department. But we have lots of students. Um, I was dealing with one today, within, with uh, one this week with uh, advisement, where they're a double major in math and statistics with a concentration in actuarial science. And the reason that they're double major, they want to do both stat and math because the actuarial science is very heavy in stat, but it's also very heavy in math. And by taking uh, the differential equations and the linear algebra and the multivariable calculus and everything, it really makes them stronger when they want to sit for their actuarial science exams. A lot of stat people just, you know, they do the math that they have to do, and then they study deeper, further math on their own to sit for their actuarial science exams but that would be a great um, path for someone interested in actuarial science, a double major or a secondary major in, um, in stat and math with a concentration on actuarial science. So there was another question. If I'm wanting to pursue a career in aviation as a pilot, what math topics would be essential or best pathways? If I remember correctly, the, uh, the aviation and certainly consult that because I'm most knowledgeable about the math majors. I want to think that for, I know that all BS at Baylor have to have calculus one. So um, for a BS in aviation science, you would take calculus one. And so preparing yourself for entry into calculus one is uh, would be essential. Now, a lot of aviation sciences majors take more math than that. Uh, because it just makes them stronger in, or, or they're just interested in it. They're more, they're interested in, in other topics. They may have, um, you know, they may want to be a commercial pilot or they may want to do something else. Um, but essential for you would be calculus one. Although a lot of times they'll take calculus one and calculus two because the BS requires uh, calculus one and a course for which calculus one is a prerequisite. So some people take Cal one and Cal two. Some people take Cal one and then calculus-based statistics. That just depends on your interests and um, how it fits into your overall educational goals. That's another great question. So here's another one. Uh, what's the best way to combine or pursue both math and computer science based on what majors and resources Baylor offers? This is an extremely common thing uh, to double major. And this is what I was saying about the secondary majors. Um, so for example, you would kind of choose which one do you want to be your primary major? Although I don't want to make that sound like whichever one you choose, the other one is like a second class citizen. That doesn't happen. What happens is your major, your primary major, let's say you wanted to be a computer science major as your primary major. Then you would get a secondary major in math. And what that does is it allows the, a lot of the labs and all the courses that you took for your computer science degree, they just get the double count over towards your math degree. So you don't have to, you don't have to do everything twice or do twice as many hours. And this is something that uh, is very easy to do. Baylor has designed it so that secondary majors are very portable and they match up and they match up well, whether you're doing a computer science uh, double, a secondary major with math, or even if we have people that major in great texts and the secondary major in math or music and a secondary major in math, the more sciences that overlap the uh, tighter fit that there is, but it still works very effortlessly and doesn't cost you longer time to degree, as long as you, you expend your elective hours in the math direction. Um, so definitely you can talk, you can email me for more detail about that and or talk 
uh, with an advisor, uh, and they can lay out a complete degree plan semester by semester of what you would take. That's a very common thing. So we have another question. How does Baylor's pure math course offerings compare to applied math course offerings? Um, and it says larger, smaller classes, difficulty, et cetera. They're just different. One's not easier and one's not harder. Um, the applied math, uh, a bunch of people that take pure math courses are gonna be in your applied math courses also and vice versa. What will tend to happen is as you get into your junior and your senior level, you'll have, there's a lot of stuff that you'll take that's common to both, but then there's gonna be some things that uh, someone that's doing the BS in pure math is going to be picking from a certain list and the person in BS applied math is gonna be picking from a certain list. The class sizes are comparable. 20 would be a very large class at the senior level in either one. And in terms of how our split of our students is, in terms of uh, BS Pure versus BS Applied, it's really close to 50-50. If uh, it's hard for me to judge which one there may be more in. There may be a few more applied math majors. It might be like 55% applied, 45% pure, but it's so close that I can't really perceive that much of a difference, okay? And the difficulty, they're, they're comparable difficulty. You can go to graduate school in both of them. Um, if you wanted to go to graduate school and study in an area like differential equations, you'd be perfectly well served doing either one. If you wanted to go into graduate school and study something like a numerical analysis, you would be better served to be in the applied. If you were gonna go study something like abstract algebra or topology, you'd be better served in the pure. But you, we send people to top graduate schools in both realms coming from both degrees every year. So that's fine. These are all great questions. Amanda, I don't want to miss any. I think we covered one. Okay. Yeah, I think you have. Um, if there are any additional questions, feel free to submit them. We have a few more minutes if there's some more questions. Yeah, these are all great questions. Very practical. And if you're wondering about your, uh, we have a lot of students that are interested in math and they say, yeah, but I want to major in something else is, is don't discount a secondary major. Don't discount doing a minor. And when you sit down for an advising appointment on campus, they can, if you tell them in advance what you're interested in, they can very easily like print out a semester by semester sample degree plan of exactly what it would look like of what you take when how long it takes you to get your degree, how, what your semesters would look like. And that can be very helpful to concretely visualize what it would look like to pursue those things. So another question is what sets Baylor apart in the STEM field from other schools across the country, resources, internships, et cetera? I would say that um, number one thing is, and this, I'm not just saying this, I think that our, our, we're in a very sweet spot in terms of size because it's very easy to go to a huge school to where you, no one knows who you are. And that makes it difficult when you want to get an internship, when you want to go to graduate school for someone to personally know you and you've, act, you've personally worked with professors, say in undergraduate research or just in your classes. I know the names of our juniors and seniors and many of our sophomores and even freshmen. I know their names and I've worked with them over multiple semesters. So that means that I know them personally and I can, I can leverage networking relationships that I have to help get them into graduate schools and or internships. On the other hand, if you're too small of a department, then you can only run so many math classes and that really constrains the number of classes and the exposure that students can get. So I think that our commitment to teaching and our size while we're big enough to be represent everything and to be uh, good researchers in all the major areas, actively publishing in all the major areas, it allows, uh, but we're not too big and, and because we're focused where we value teaching, uh, that allows an undergraduate to have a very positive experience there. So we had another question come in. How challenging is it to double major in math and accounting? I know lots of students that do it. It works very well. If you mean challenging 
in terms of taking your courses, uh, that's really a subjective call. Uh, if you're saying challenging in, can I make it work for my degree? It's very doable. It's very doable. One thing that Baylor did a couple of years ago, and I'll wrap up here, Amanda, is uh, by redesigning our core and making it smaller, that is a, that's given students increased flexibility to do things that they might on the face of it think, oh, these don't go together, like double majoring in math and accounting. Very, very doable. Uh, double majoring in math and music. Very, very doable. And it's because of the robust number of elective hours that we have and allowing those to count, use those hours instead of using them to experiment and take all kinds of classes. If you know you wanna do something like math and accounting, you spend those hours on math and you walk away with two degrees, which makes you really, really competitive in the job market. Great question. There's one question in the chat that I'm not sure we got to answer. Okay. Um, it says, if I were to have interest in actual science for a career, what path would be the best for me? I think I did talk, I did do that one. Oh, okay. Okay, I did that one pretty early on. And I, I do see one that I, that I scrolled down that I missed and I'll answer it really quickly. Is it possible to graduate in three years based on the courses I've already taken in high school? Yes, very much so. If you come in with a lot of AP credit or you had like IB credit or dual credit, um, some of our very best students, we have great students that come in with uh, more modest amounts of credit, but we have students that come in with a lot of credit. And that is very capable. Uh, it's very, you're very capable of doing that, depending on the courses that you have, as long as they are the right courses and they transfer to Baylor. It's not unheard of at all for someone to have calculus one, two, three, linear algebra and differential equations. Now, keep in mind, that's an exceptional student, but that happens and it happens every single year. And I mean, that's a year's worth of college mathematics. So definitely that is that is possible. And feel free to reach out with to me with particulars if you want to ask. I am the one that decides on the transfer credits for people that are coming in. So we have a, a list of approved transfers, but stuff that's not on our list, I evaluate on a person by person basis. So. Okay, well, thank you everybody for joining us today. Thank you, Dr. Davis. We appreciate you presenting this information. And if anyone has additional questions, please feel free to reach out like you've provided his email. And don't forget the M. I have the yes. same thing. <laughs> but my email has the middle initial M as well. So. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Enjoy the rest All of right. the event. All right. Bye.